If managing your time better is one of your biggest goals for this year, then you, my friend, have come to the right place. Because in today's conversation, we have a special guest joining us, the planner princess herself. And we are going to be talking about how you can begin to tackle your time, your tasks, and your to-dos with joy. So grab a pen and a piece of paper. And if you have one ready and available, get your planner ready because at the end of this conversation, we'll be outlining six tangible tips and tricks that you can begin to implement immediately to finally get a grip on your calendar and your priorities. One feel good thing at a time. You ready to hop in? Let's do it. You're listening to the Journey to Purpose podcast with Erica Lasson. The road to joy and purpose can feel unfamiliar, uncomfortable, and sometimes, because others don't always understand it, it can be isolating and lonely. For almost 30 years of my life, I identified myself through roles and titles that put pressure on me to perform, but often left me feeling empty and void of purpose. But things got real when I discovered I'd be gaining yet another new title, that of Molly. It was at that point of surrender that I chose joy. Now as a joy strategist and creative consultant, I help women and entrepreneurs in transitional phases of life find joy, purpose, and healing in what's next. In this podcast, we dive deep into stories, lessons, and transparent conversations to uncover vision manifesting joy gems that are sure to help you rediscover, reconnect, and recommit to your purpose and identity and joy. One feel good thing at a time. Hey, 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 guys. Thanks for tuning into another episode of the Journey to Purpose podcast with me, Erica Lasan. And I'm really excited because this conversation, it's a blast from the past, 2022 to be exact. For almost a decade, I'd been looking for the perfect planner system. But every time I thought I found a planner that met my time management needs, there always seemed to be something missing. Most of the planners that I would use failed to meet all of my needs and considerations as an entrepreneurial mom. And when I wasn't able to hit every single task that I set out to do for the day, it often left me feeling like I was failing to meet my own expectations. Okay. Cue the disappointment, the guilt, and all the other things that we try to avoid when we're (laughs) productive overachievers. Can you relate to this at all? I'm sure you can't. Right. And it's for this very reason that I decided to create my own planner called the Journey Daily Planner, which prioritized my mental health and well-being first in order to influence and inspire more productivity and fulfillment in my life, career, and relationships. I'll be sharing more about the Journey Daily Planner at the end of this episode, along with a special announcement. So I hope you stick around because we are still at the top of the year. And if you're anything like me, you're doing a lot of vision casting and planning. I wanted to make sure that I put out this video in particular because I thought it was such a fun conversation around understanding how you can better manage your time to support your vision, your dreams, and your goals starting today. So without further ado, let's hop in. And I'm so excited for you to meet today's special guest because she's someone that is very near and dear to my heart. And she's also really fun. So let's dive in. (laughs) Today's guest is a fellow journal junkie. The the planner princess, <laughs> the professional, I want to say taskmaster and to-do list maker, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> my little sister, Beverly Lasson. Be, 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 be. <laughs> Sissy Poo, introduce yourself. You know, I listen to so many podcasts and I've always wondered like, when people are giving their intro resume, like what they do, what would mine sound like? And I feel like this is this is my time. Yeah. <laughs> it has um, arrived. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, I am Beverly, sister of Erica. I am the planner of the family and of my life. You know what? I've had this conversation before. Like, what am I? What do I do? And I was thinking about James Clear and what he wrote in Atomic Habits, if you want to become something, you have to be a person who does X and that makes you that thing. Um, Yeah. So one of the things I used to wonder if I am, I used to wonder if I am creative, but I'm not, I don't do like media, um, like drawing or painting, but my creativity comes out in the form of 
being creative about strategy and planning, that's where my curiosity and creativity lies. So I was like, I don't have to be a painter, but it's like, I am a strategist. That is my thing. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> it really is. And you know, it's just so funny because I feel like over time I've watched you evolve into this person. Our family is really creative in a lot of different ways. Everyone mm -hmm. has their own gifts, right? Mm -hmm. But I feel I really started to notice in your your mid to late teens that organization <laughs> and girl, yes. Because you would be the one that would always be on us about time. And I don't think that I really learned the, ne the need to be on time to things and actually take it seriously. Mm -hmm. until I was in college. Actually, no, after I graduated college, if I'm being completely honest, mm -hmm. time management has always been something that I've struggled with. And I didn't necessarily see it as a problem because I was just like, oh, this is part of my culture. You know, we used to make a joke about it, about TPT and then, you know, African time being another thing on top of that. And then like Nigerians. <laughs> Niger time on top of African time. It was bad. And I remember always going to class late in high school. They knew that I would, I would never miss a day of school, but I'd be late for everything. You know, same thing in college. And then after college, I was always late to work. And it was just something that became a part of not what I desired to identify with, but it was something that people identified with me. And at one point, I remember getting very self-conscious about it and being like, you know, I want to change. <laughs> I want to be better. I need a transformation in my life. And it was after I think I'd gone to momentum. And I just remember being like, this is not good. I'd felt comfort up to that point. But then I really started to understand how much it was impacting me professionally. The struggle to get to things on time when I actually wanted to be on time. When I started to really consider how much I wanted to make that change, I realized that you were the only person in our family at the time. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually considerate of time and the conversation around not only um, being on time, but how when you aren't on time, you're actually not valuing other people's time who may be waiting on you, you know, mm -hmm. and I'd never really considered that before. And then like after I noticed it with you wanting to get better about it, I then noticed it about Brian, like being really on top of time. And then I saw how y'all were tag team in situations. Yeah. And I was like, I need that in my life. And then I just started to, I don't know, just pay attention to some of the stuff that you were doing. And it was, it was really cool to see you not only understand the value of that in your life, but then create the systems at such a young age to hold yourself to it, but then bringing other people in the family into the mix. And now when it comes to like structure and systems and even planning things like the sibling accords, which if you guys don't know, we put together this whole situation so that we can get all the streaming services as a family. <laughs> Cause we all had like three Netflix and you Hulu and um, Amazon accounts, but we decided to come together as a family unit to get the best of everything. So when it came to organizing that spreadsheet, who did we call on other than the planner princess herself? Beverly. <laughs> so when it came to this conversation, I knew that I had to bring you in also because we both get giddy yeah, over journaling. planners. Yes, yeah, honestly, this entire episode was inspired by talking about the fact that I got a new 2022 planner and Beverly was like, oh my goodness, tell me about it. And we ended up talking about it for 30 minutes. And I was like, you know what? Let's just record this and call it a podcast episode. Now that I've given you all the backstory and all of Beverly's credentials, let's hop into the meat of the conversation, which is how do you begin your organizing process when it comes to managing your time? For me, it starts off with knowing what the end result is that I'm looking for. I only started planning with a planner maybe four or five years ago. That's when I started taking it seriously. When I was in high school, they would give us those school theme planners for writing down assignments and when they're due and you got a free one every year but after that when I got to college they did not give you a planner so it's just <laughs> up to me <laughs> 2017 that's when I started using my first planner in my adult life by choice I was out of the traditional college sense where your time is structured but you get to put your own spin on it whereas in high school all your time is structured for you like your class schedule what extracurriculars you have after school and then at home it's homework 
whatever, sleep, do it again. So you don't have to really structure on time. College, you're choosing your own classes now and you're choosing what you do in your free time outside of that. And it's kind of like you're putting your own spin on the structure within that. But when you're an adult, you know, it's it's all it's it's a free for all with your time. You got to figure out what happens with it or it goes away or you like you feel like you never have free time, even though you have all the time in the world. So as an adult, <laughs> as an adult, I fell into that, like, where's all my extra time going or I would double book on plans. So my the goal for my planner was to one, remember where all my time was going, kind of like a um inventory of time so that if someone asked me at the end of the week what did you do this week I'll be able to point and be like this I did this on this day and this at this time and not have to wonder if I've double booked or something and just be able to be accountable for time coming up and plan accordingly for that so those were the two main things I wanted from my planner but as I started using it more I found out that there were other things that my planner was good for. And (laughs) each year I have looked for a planner that's already structured the way I need my mind to work. So most planners that I enjoy are like monthly and weekly planners because it has the month already here for you all laid out. So it's like, if you need a quick reference, you'll go to the planners month day and be like, okay, I got that. And then in, in the days You know, you can plan out what's going on ahead of time, cross them out differently, depending on how it ended up working out. So if it has a straight line across it, it means I did that task on that day as planned. If it is curly crossed out like that, that means (laughs) that means that it's rescheduled for another day in the future. So if I see a cross out like that, I know to look in the future and be like, oh, when did that get rescheduled to? If it's crossed out like this, that means I started the task, but didn't complete it the way that I would have liked to complete it for it to get a straight cross out. And if it's crossed out curvy, like that means I didn't do it that day and I just didn't feel like doing it. And I'm probably not going to reschedule it uh, like I would with a, this crossed out squiggly. or, huh? Well, with a squiggly. <laughs> yeah, so with a squiggly or with the hard one. A mountain range one. one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. So you've touched yeah. on so many things that I'm really excited about because there's so much about what you shared that mm-hmm. I resonate with and was also a part of my journaling process. Mm-hmm. So I've kept a, a, a planner since 2010. That's when I started keeping a, a planner. Because mm-hmm. like you, I was going to work, but then after work, I would want to do things. But I was, I was tired of not remembering what I'd done the day before and feeling like that I had part. all this time, but then I never had any time. And I'm like, but what did I do? Same thing with finances. I feel like at one point that was also a thing where it's like, <laughs> yes, that's right. Put Tuck your non-existent yeah. hair behind yeah. your ears. <laughs> You're like, are you talking about me? Do you, mean, you know my life? But yeah, well... I mean, that was me at one point, but okay. Um, yeah. Look, growth, right? This yeah. is why we're having this conversation because I was so tired of feeling like I had all the time, but then no time or all the money and then no money like yep. that. And so I think that I very quickly realized that this the more I could track what it was that I was doing, then the better I could plan for it or begin to rid myself of things that didn't necessarily serve the vision. Because to your point of knowing what you want the end result to be and why, I feel for me that still comes back to a conversation of vision, right? But in addition to knowing what you want it to look like, what is it that you want things to feel like? And I was tired of feeling like I didn't have no time. Over the past 13 years, I kept a planner, but the first three or four years, I wasn't really being intentional about the planner. Mm -hmm. There would be months when I'd be like on it. And then there would be months where I'd just be like, I don't know what I did with my life, Mm -hmm. you know? (laughs) And then I'd get back to it and I feel really good about it. But it wasn't until about eight years ago that I started my serious planner process. And it started with wanting to do bullet journaling because I was like, oh my goodness, it's so cute. You get to create a 
planner the way that you want it and it's customizable and I like arts and crafts so I was like this is going to be so much fun until I started doing it bullet journaling my planner from scratch and it was so much work it it took the joy out of the entire process so I was like yeah I don't like this this ain't fun I would rather have a planner that has the main parts written out and then I can customize it in a way that feels good to me. And through that process over the past eight years, I've tried so many different planners. You also like mentioned something that I also do and just how you keep track of your time, even within the planner and yeah. how you keep track of what was done versus mm -hmm. what wasn't done. You built mm -hmm. out your little systems with your little scratch out mm -hmm. <laughs> And I have one too. It's different, but the idea is the same in understanding how you're utilizing your time so that you can be intentional about how you use it moving forward and what you do versus what you say you'll do. What are some of the, the, the greatest outcomes you've been able to achieve because of just being better around how you use your time with a planner system? My peak planner life was pre-COVID, like the year before COVID. I can reminisce about those planner days. I'm gonna talk about that time because I'm trying to work back up to that. I felt like I just had such a full life. Like I was able to fit in so much activity. I was able to plan time for friends, family, a social life, trying new things. I was also going to school. I was working full time. And then I had like volunteer activities that I was doing throughout the year. And it didn't feel like I was, you know, squishing things in with my time or constantly forgetting people. So I feel like when I have a, a well-planned out life, I'm able to do more. Mm. Ooh, okay. Ooh, 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 this is juicy. <laughs> because based on everything that you said, mm -hmm. hearing it, I'm like, oh, that's a lot. I almost felt a little overwhelmed hearing yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. You're telling me that you actually felt freer. Yes. Based on yes. the fact that you were implementing a planner, but you didn't feel overwhelmed or overworked or over no. it. Just based Negative. on the ability to like um, use your time intentionally. And I think mm -hmm. that it's so cool that you've learned this now because honestly, I didn't learn that lesson until motherhood. Mm -hmm. I was someone who liked to... I like to think of myself as someone who was like really flexible and could go with the flow. Like, oh man, I don't need structure. I don't want to be put in a box. You know, I just want to move as the spirit leads. And I felt that if I had any type of like time constraints around anything, I would feel mm -hmm. a lack of freedom. But once I had kids, I just felt that that just led to chaos, mm -hmm. mental overload, and just being mad at the fact that I didn't have any time for anything. And in some weird way, having kids and becoming a mom kind of put me in a routine that I didn't know that I needed. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> the moment that started happening, actually not, I can't even say the moment it started happening. Cause when it, when it started happening, I fought it a lot. Mm -hmm. But then the moment I was like, well, you know what, let me just try living according to this schedule that my kids have put me on. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> because y'all know that they're the boss. Don't tell them though. And I found that it was so good. Oh my goodness. It was so nice to understand. All right. I got this pocket of time. This is how I'm going to use it. I only have this pocket of time. This is how I'm going to use it. And then also realizing that because I was so, I don't want to say limited in time because I don't want to turn it into a scarcity conversation, but because I was aware of just how much time I had, it also made it easier for me to place boundaries on people having access to my time. So when people would say, hey, can you do this? It's like, mm, I mean, can I? Sure, but do I want to? No, so I'm going to choose my joy. <laughs> I'm going to say no to this and it's okay. So I love that you you were able to understand even without having this thing of family to, to answer mm -hmm. to, just like understanding the value of your time and the freedom that comes with um, being able to plan ahead. But you were about to say something. Yes, related to that. So when I was saying that that time in my life was like, I was about to say my peak life, but <laughs> <laughs> I said my peak planner life because I was able to plan everything. But the lesson that you learned was a whole separate thing. In that year, I was just like, wow, well, I'm doing so much. The next year I was exhausted. And I was mm. like, what have I like? And now I feel like I don't have any time or actually 
it was one of those things where your body started to let you know that you're moving too fast and too much. But mm. I didn't realize it because all my time was planned out. And I think a conversation with me and Key led to me realizing that I needed to plan rest. It's just like, just because you're able to stack everything in your life so that it fits nicely and it can move. It's like the difference between, you know, trying to move along life in a, uh, a car with full with full air versus like it's flat it's like it's moving but that's probably not the best way for you to move you're not moving as efficiently or I wasn't moving as efficiently for the life I wanted to live so the next year I learned how to schedule rest or schedule breaks or schedule things that I want to do for fun and just not all the things that I need to do or can do and having a planner helped me in like some friendships where one, it didn't feel like I was ignoring my friends for long periods of time and always saying, oh, I don't have time to do this. It was that I had time, but I was allocating it to a lot of other things that wasn't, you know, nurturing to my friendships or with people that I felt like were taking too much time. I was able to see my planners like, I have spent this much time with you already and <laughs> I have all these things planned with you. So maybe I got to step back from, you know, putting you in my planner. And one of the best feelings about having a planner and like understanding the value of my time was having something in front of me that would make it easier for me to say no. Because without it, people would ask me if I wanted to do something or if I was available to do something. And it'd be easy to look at my planner, know that the block of time was free and just say yes, because I can do it. But having a planner and putting in times of rest and doing things that are relaxing for me, I was able to be like, I mean, this Time doesn't have events, but I have me time scheduled on Wednesday and this activity I'm going to do for fun on Friday. So it's like, even though no event to go to those days, I still don't think I'm going to, you know, want to allocate my time to being social when this block of time has been dedicated to, you know, self-care for me, whatever that yeah. meant. I love it. Oh my goodness. This brings up a lot of stuff for me in terms of, one that I'm so glad that you learned to plan rest early. I wish I would have <laughs> learned that sooner. Honestly, <laughs> like I am just, I just learned this three years ago as a mom of two, just <laughs> the need to do nothing. Okay. If you want to take a nap, take a nap. If you want to paint your toenails, paint your toenails. I don't know. Like whatever it is that brings you joy in that day. And in that season, a year ago or so in 2020, I became very keenly aware of the need to rest but it was a spiritual thing where I felt God was like basically not trying to say smack me into submission you know because everything he does he does with love but it took like a work situation with the building the business and just an extreme disappointment for me where it was like oh this is go season lord I'm doing this 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 thinking that I was doing all the things to set myself up for success and I had a really disappointing launch and when I tell y'all, all right, this is a moment of transparency. I haven't told this to anyone except for my family and friends knew, but I'd never like mentioned it publicly, but I boo-hooed. There was one point where I was really excited about it and I was like, yes. And then I was like, Lord, I hold on to my faith. I was feeling really good about it. But midway through the launch, when things weren't going as planned, I remember taking Nick somewhere and he was sitting in the car and we pulled up and I just started crying. <laughs> he was like are you okay and I was just like I just feel like I've done all the things I've done everything I'm supposed to do I planned I hired help I did all this stuff and I kid you not in that moment it was like a holy spirit moment where he really spoke to my heart and he was like yeah you did all this stuff but I didn't ask you to do that stuff quick pause if you're a frequent listener of this podcast then this story may sound a little familiar yep you guessed it this the story of my failure to launch from our last episode entitled Receive Rest. If you don't know this story and you have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about, I hope you take time to check it out after this episode is done. Okay, now back to the regular scheduled program. <laughs> <laughs> like He's like, I, I told you that this is the plan and this is the vision, but what you didn't do was rest. And in that moment, the message that I got was that <clears throat> my idea of what leads to success doesn't include having to work hard, especially if you're moving by faith and trusting God to do what it is that he says he would do. From that moment on, I began to understand that like, when you prioritize rest, you're actually accepting a blessing that's been given to you. 
So I love that you got that message so early. And I, I, I'm telling you, even now, it's sometimes something where I have to put my mind in a position to be like, girl, stop. Like, I have to tell myself, this is not resting. You need to do absolutely nothing today. And I feel like you said, it shows up in your body as well. And so often I think as, well, I want to speak for women. Is it okay if I speak for women? I'm going to speak for women. Because I feel like, you're like, do you girl, it's your show. You're doing it anyway. Uh, (laughs) But I feel like as women, we've been conditioned and we are conditioned to just keep going, keep going, keep going. Like if we're not moving, what are we doing? And then especially in this social media age and like this technical technological age where hustle culture is a thing, the daily grind, like business is glamorized and stuff. So it's like, if you're not moving, you're not making progress, but there is also progress to be made when you sit still and you're able to rest strategy and then move forward with a plan. Yes. Right. Yes. And I think that that's something I did not understand until like two or three years ago. And every time I felt that call or that need, and it's like a spiritual thing, right? Because you have to be really attuned to yourself. But every time I felt that call and I've hearkened (laughs) hearkened to the call to rest (laughs) or just like listen to it, so many beneficial things have happened not only for myself, but for my family, for my life, for my business and my overall well-being. So I think that that's so like such an amazing tip to, to, to have learned and also to share, to just like plan rest. And in this year for me, Sundays have become that day of rest. I mean, I know that it's something that the Bible tells us we should do anyway. When I've read the Bible in Leviticus and Exodus, like you really begin to see the fruits of what happens when you acknowledge the Sabbath for what it is and when you actually take the Sabbath rest. And there are so many scriptures that talk about how the Israelites would were blessed by taking that time for rest. But then it also then goes on to share like the the non-benefits of not resting and how not taking that time for rest negatively impacted them, their land and their people. So I, I'm really grateful for the ability to rest in that way and the Sabbath because this is the day I do nothing except for have fun conversations like this with you. <laughs> Something that you brought up was that, you know, grind culture and working hard, not being part of the vision that you have for, you know, or not realizing that that's not the only way to have a, you know, good life. I'm paraphrasing what you said, but you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but even when you said that, Like, I feel like the way grind culture is represented today, it's like you have to, if you are tired, if you are not sleeping, you know, like work hard, work now, sleep later. That is the message that's sent. Like, if you're doing this, then you're doing it right. But when you said that, I was just like, but the hard, doing hard work and working hard is not the same thing as doing the right work for your Mm -hmm. life or for whatever vision you have for your life. It's two very different things. And the rest that you'll get after doing hard work is not the same kind of rest you'll desire or feel when you are resting from the right work. So Mm. I feel like, I think we've had a conversation before. I thought about something that was happening with you where I think your rest with the work that you have been doing uh, I think recently your rest is going to be your season of harvest and Amen. rest and not, and you know, I feel like there's even different kinds of rest. There's really like the rest where you need to be doing nothing. Like you don't move a muscle in your body. You give your brain a time to like not have to work or think that's one type of rest. And then there's active rest where it's like, yeah, you did all the work last season and now you're reaping the benefits of that. But I feel, feel like there's a joy in the rest that comes in the time of harvest. Like it, it's more relaxed than what you were doing in the, in the tilling season, but you get to, it's like laying back and enjoying the work, the slower work that you're doing in your time of rest, if that makes sense. You're not stressing about the same things and you're not, um, you're also not laid back and doing nothing. Cause when you're doing the right work or work that you love, sometimes the work is fun. I feel like resting in that season is kind of like fun work versus, you know, active, difficult work or, you know, more time consuming or energy consuming work. But, but yeah, just, just 
just a thing. It's like taking that moment to really just see ex- and experience the fruits of your labor. You and I have, have spoken about this, about 2022 being my year of rest. And I'm, I'm, I feel myself experiencing the rest of being able to see how all of these things that I've done the past two years are now just being put into play where I'm like, oh, that's why the Lord had me do this thing. Or, oh, like that random thing that like that year of just sitting down and writing 21 day programs each and every single day for 12 months where I was like stressing about it and nobody understood why I was doing it or like, and I wasn't making that much money off of it. I now see how it plays into the bigger picture and this overall the idea that I have for a five-year plan, you know? So I definitely hear you on that. I have a question for you though, as far as how you keep your planner, because I know that you have a tangible planner and yes. I also have one, like a physical one, but yeah. what are your thoughts about digital planning versus like analog planning? Do you also have a system where you keep digital and paper, pen and paper planning in place. Yeah, and that's been an evolutionary evolutionary story for me as well. Prior to 2021, I was strictly analog. Like, I'm not going anywhere without my planner. If I don't have my planner, would you talk to me? Like, it's not going to happen. And I'm telling you, it's not going to happen. So if you don't see me write it down, or I'm not telling you I'm writing down, writing it while we're speaking, even if it's over the phone, it's just not going to happen. Um, <laughs> I'm remembering when I lost that planner, though, <laughs> for like okay. a week. <laughs> and the havoc it like took on my life. I just felt lost. I was like, I don't know what I've done. I don't know who I told I can do what and when. So I was like, okay, so maybe there is some merit and value in a digital planner. <laughs> but this year, I'm I'm kind of doing both. I'm trying out doing my planner like my month and weekly day to day in the planner, but I have a digital to-do list and a digital habit tracker that um, I'm using this year because the analog also got to be too much at one point. I had a book (laughs) for my daily to-do list and then I had my planner and then I had my journal that I also wrote in daily. And then in my head, I was thinking of more like notebooks and lists paper requiring list that I could do and I was like at that point I'm gonna have like four or five books for the way I schedule out my life so I was just like all right let me make my daily to-do list journal notebook thing virtual for that I have an app called to do <laughs> way to make it fancy <laughs> no it's literally spelled to do like it's French oh. just like to like to oh, and do yeah oh, okay <laughs> I was like, you always gotta be extra. <laughs> it was recommended by some YouTuber and he would say it so funny. I was like, why is he saying it like that? And then he like shared a link for the app he uses and it was literally to the <laughs> But yeah, T-E-U-X-D-E-U-X to the Oh, that is so funny. That's my daily list app and then an app called Habits from a habit tracker. And that has been helping me on a day-to-day basis. To do helps me get an overview of the week or the day, but without needing a notebook for it. So it's all about what works for you. Always, I'm learning that because I used to be, once when I was in peak planner life, I was recommending it to everybody. But then I just became more open to like other people's needs. I'm like, okay, not everyone functions as well as I do with the planner. But it's really about what works for you. And what works for you one year may not work the next year. But as long as you're always trying to find, like, what structure looks like for you, what kind of structure you need, then it's like, you, you can't really go wrong. Oh, my gosh. Beverly, why are you, you just, like, jumping ahead? Like, you're inspiring all oh these questions. I know. I mean, we are related, so we, like, are totally on that same land wave. But, like, one of the things that you mentioned were was a part of a question that I wanted to ask you, which is, what are some things that you cannot live without in a planner? Because you mentioned habit tracking, and you also mentioned a to-do thing, which I find very interesting because I just, last year, bought a planner that does have, like, a habit tracker system mm-hmm. in it. And when I tell you, it blew my mind how effective that was for me. 
because prior to that, I had been writing it in space where the tasks for the day would go and it would like annoy me because it takes up so much space to write like, yeah, like work out, drink water, stick to (laughs) to diet, you know? And it's like that space I could have been using for something else. And so the idea of just having a simple tick to keep track of how consistent or inconsistent you are with something is really cool. And I remember when I was doing bullet journaling eight years ago, how a light bulb moment that was for me to include that and how effective it was in even keeping me on track, but I'd never had it in a physical planner. Then you also mentioned the to-do list. And I think that that's really cool to mention because at one point before getting into planner life, I would write to-do list for days. And one of the things that I found most frustrating, it was effective, but then ineffective at the same time, because you could literally be adding on to to to-do list forever and then be feeling like you're getting absolutely nowhere. So then that built more frustration for me. And this is around the time when I had just become a mom of two. I was running my blog, Live Rich Mommy, at the same time, in addition to making content for other people and making jewelry. So the to-do list was never ending. At one, and at one point, I was just like, this don't make no sense. And so just the idea of lessening the number of things I did each day and actually being able to cross off those things gave me so much satisfaction in just seeing the things that were getting done get done. And in a way where I wasn't overwhelmed But then I felt like I was making progress towards my overall goals. But something else that you mentioned that's really interesting and that I could not agree with more and which has been a part of this process is just understanding how your brain works, right? Like understanding that all planners are not made equal, understanding the need to understand yourself. Like there's a whole podcast episode that's out with the journey to purpose called know thyself because the Mm -hmm. moment you begin to understand yourself and know yourself including how you best operate and how you best think can really help in your planner prioritizing process and I think that that's really where the joy comes in because you're no longer subjecting yourself to this feeling of failure for not accomplishing things because you're working in a way that works best for you and you're you're crossing off the things that are most important for you. I also kind of want to use this as a little bit of a segue and a plug to like talking about just optimizing your planet situation. And I just want to take this moment to let you all who are listening slash watching know that y'all need to keep an eye out and subscribe to the newsletter because there may be something happening with the journey to purpose planning situation. (laughs) And if you'd like to be kept in the loop about what's coming up and this very special thing that's coming up, coming out, then you definitely want to be subscribed to the mailing list. Hint, hint, wink, wink. Nudge, nudge. (laughs) One of the last things that I want to ask you, because I honestly feel like I could do this forever. Like you and I could literally talk about this forever. So what is the planner that you chose and why? Like Uh, each year, does it change? It changes each year only because I still haven't found the perfect planner for me. One thing that's important about my planner is that I like the way it looks. I want it to be something that I'm excited to come to if I'm going to be looking at it daily that helps me want to look at it every day for the months i like the squares to not have lines pre-done on them some planners will like have four lines already put there and that's so that i can fill it the way i need to like it's no guarantee that i'm only going to have four tasks in a day and have those four lines so i like to be able to make it as small as i need to or as big as i need to then the other must have for a planner is lines on the weekly section but like the perfect number of lines you know some lines be too thick and they only have like one two or three I can't (laughs) rock with that it needs to be like five and more but those are the three must-haves of any planner that I choose I love it okay so my turn (laughs) I get very excited about this planner talk because I feel like I started a kind of with the same idea when I initially really got into planning or using planners, I generally would get like the the monthly ones. So I would just like keep track of like big tasks. But then as I kind of went on in my planner journey, (laughs) I then realized that I like a weekly planner. Like I want a monthly section so that I don't forget the big things. But then I wanted the weekly section to break down that. But then at one point I got very clear on the fact that I needed a daily planner just to keep track of all of the tasks that kind of went on as a multi-passionate creative slash mom. So each year is just gotten like progressively like 
more elaborate, but this is the first year that I have one that gets broken down by hour and it has changed the game. Oh my gosh. But I think that that's also because my business is starting to do different things too. So just understanding where my time is and what's happening has become a really big priority for me. So I got the Clever Fox planner again. I mean, I really enjoy this planner, but I'm in the process of making my own planner. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge, you know, the whole situation. <laughs> going. Just for you guys who may be wondering where this is leading, <laughs> leading to, that's like a surprise that will be, I guess it's not a surprise anymore. If I now just told you. it's like, oh, but, yeah. it now. <laughs> I do think that it's very important to set goals, like yearly goals, but not so much to the point where you're not flexible with like what you're doing, but just understanding how each thing that you do in every day of your life contributes to the overall vision for where it is that you want to go. Has been something that I've really implemented over the year so that you're not like wasting any of your time. Not that like you're wasting your life, but just understanding how everything contributes to the overall. And I like my monthly section to plan out like big things. Like if I have like a speaking engagement or a vacation or like the kids are out of school, I think that that's really helpful to have. But then I love having just a weekly section to kind of break down what the day-to-day -day tasks or asks are. And even keeping track of like how late I sleep in. Because at one point I got very aware of wanting to be up by a certain time. And it's really easy to like continue to do the same thing until you see how what you're doing may not be contributing to your goals. So I started keeping track of what time I slept to. And when I saw that the lines were taking up more than half the page, it was like, girl, let's get this in check, right? So, and it's not that I like sleep in late because I'm a bum. It's like, I would sleep in late because I was working on something the night before, but just being mindful of that and seeing it really helped me like hold myself to it. Having a section for your personal to-dos versus your work to-dos because they're not one and the same. And as someone who is a multi-passionate creative and entrepreneurial person, like my business takes up a lot of my mind space so much so that at one point I realized I needed to balance the personal priorities. Like doing laundry right or <laughs> I have laundry like scheduled feeding. in my planner <laughs> yeah yeah it's a thing yeah. girl I have laundry I have groceries I also have like one thing that I've gotten like really aware of the need for is just like scheduling routine doctor's appointments where I do them for the kids and I, I, I remember doing a podcast episode about this last year too where I wasn't scheduling my own doctor's appointments you know what I mean so like just being aware of those things and really taking time for work-life balance and even prioritizing your professional development, like scheduling that stuff in where it's not like doing all every training that you can that comes across your path, but understanding again, how everything contributes to your whole and taking time to do fun, new things and hobbies. And for me, joy is a big part of the work that I do, but at the same time, like, because my work brings me joy. I need to find things outside of work to do that bring me joy as mm -hmm. well, you know? And that's been a process for me as well. So just having a planner to like hold me accountable to it and plan for it has been really, really cool. And I'm really excited to share the journey planner as it comes together with you all when it comes together and it's ready for release. So you're yawning. It's time for you to take a nap. No. I feel like... Uh -huh. Don't tell the people that. Don't tell the people that. <laughs> Girl, I saw it. I saw it in your face. You this is such a fun conversation. I wanted to leave the people with some key takeaways that they may, they could really carry from this conversation in terms of how living and moving intentionally with their time and prioritizing time management. So I have three things. Actually, no, you go first. What are three key takeaways, tips, and tricks that you'd like to share with the people for how to manage and prioritize their time with intention moving forward. Step one, know what you're trying to do with your time and take account for it before you actually create your structure to see, see where your time goes. Then that'll help you plan out for your future when you know what you do. So it's easier to know what to take out or maybe what to add in. Um, tip two, plan rest. I feel like that that message should be given earlier, like plan rest. Like I wish it wasn't a thing you have to learn that 
rest should be intentional. And if you have to go as far as planning it, do that. And tip three, give me a second, or maybe that is three. Take account for your time at the beginning before you figure out what you want to do with your time and then know what you want to do with your time so that you can put that step one to use. And then three, plan rest. Thank you. I love it. (laughs) Boom, mic drop. Some of the ones that you shared also piggyback with some of the key things that I consider. So the three that I would like to share are one, figure out what matters most to you and your priorities, right? Because yes, yes. that's the thing. Because if you don't get a handle on it, people will get a handle on it for you, okay? Uh, <laughs> the second thing is take a, a, a moment to really get clear about how you desire to feel at the end of your days and your weeks. So really having a vision of not only what you want to do, but how you want to feel at the end of the week. And then like once you get to the end of the week, take inventory of what was done and how how much it actually aligned with the feeling that you really wanted to have. Because then that can help kind of dictate what you do or you don't do the next week, you know? Then the third thing I would probably say is to really consider how you work and how your mind operates best. And it's a process. I think that if there's anything that I want anyone who's listening or watching this episode to take away from this conversation, it's that our processes, right? These are all tips. These are all tricks. These are things that we've learned over a period of time based on our love for planning. A long period of time. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) A very long period of time. And it's trial and error, right? All of this has been a building process of things that may not have worked, or maybe they worked for a season. And then at one point they were ineffective, but just understanding how your mind works best so that you can create the outcomes and the results that you desire, I think is a really important thing that a lot of people don't take time to consider because sometimes, a lot of times, I think that happens as a result of not taking that time for rest. Because if you're constantly moving forward, when do you then take a moment to pause, reflect, and see what's working versus what's not working? And I think that sometimes that really just take sitting down and like learning yourself getting to understand yourself better can I add one more thing yeah sure or maybe two but one with what you said my planner journey one like I said started in 2017 and I don't feel like I'm done and you may never (laughs) be done it's an ongoing never-ending process it's like even if you feel like you've reached peak understanding of how something works circumstance could easily change that. So just understanding that it's a process that keeps going. And I feel like that opens you up to being prepared when that change happens, even when you think you've reached some form of perfection, but it's not about perfection. It's about progression. Another thing is that I feel like if you're really trying to go on a planner journey, it's not only about the structure. I feel I found my planner journey to be almost also emotional to a degree and going on it helped me become aware of, of a lot of different parts of my life. So don't only think of it as like time management, it's like also life management, management of self. So, you know, if you do find yourself emotional or on this journey and you think it's, it doesn't make sense to be emotional about, you know, how you plan your life and stuff, it, it can be, it can be. So yeah. Yeah. And it's okay. It it's okay. okay. Oh my goodness. This has been so much fun. Before we end the episode, I want to leave you guys with a joy jam because this is something that we also do here on the show where I leave you with a scripture inspired by the theme for the day. And one that I've really held on to in the past two years that I didn't realize was a thing until I read the book of Exodus and God was giving Moses descriptions for how he wanted the tabernacle to be built out. But then also reading like the process that they used to take it down and put it back up as they were moving throughout the desert for 40 years. First Corinthians 14.33 is our joy gem for today. And it says, for God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. And this really hit me in just, again, thinking about the tabernacle and the description of the vision and the plan and the outline that God gave Moses. And just thinking about how big the tabernacle was but how 
every single person, and I can't remember how many people they said it took to operate the the tabernacle, but I remember like doing the math, and I for, I feel like I remember it being like over a hundred and forty thousand people that it took to operate the tabernacle from putting it up to breaking it down to the the priest who like actually carried out the rituals within the tabernacle like the placing of the bread making the sacrifices washing things like each person had their job and it said that in in the book I wish I was reading it but it said that everybody knew what their task was so there was no disorder and if you think about that and even the fact that when they would move from place to place there would be order in how the tribes would move, which tribe would go first and which direction they would move from. By the time the next tribe would arrive at the place where they were going, the pieces that, the foundations for the pieces that they would then put on top of that were already laid. It like blew my mind after I read it in its entirety and I realized like just how important that passage of scripture is. And I think that a lot of times it can be really easy to blow past certain parts of the Bible as, and thinking of it as boring, but there was so much to be learned, or at least that I learned when I read through that the first time in its entirety, and then even more so when I read it the second time. So just understanding that for everyone who thinks that there's no need to plan your time or thinking, I don't have the time to plan my time or thinking, well, what is the sense of planning my time? Life is going to do what it do anyway. Yes, it will. But there's also a gift of peace that comes in just understanding the power of planning as much as you can, but also leaving room for God to move in the way that he does and understanding that his way is a way of peace. You know, like we plan as much as we can. Um, there's never space for confusion when you're like trusting in God's like peace and his purpose. So I hope that that blesses you guys as much as it blessed me. But I'd also love to hear from you guys and how your planning processes work. What do you find to be most effective in how you plan out your days, your weeks, your months, and your years? Um, and what are some systems and strategies that you can't live without? I'd love to know in the comments. Wasn't that a good conversation? Weren't those some juicy tips though? I love my sister Beverly. And I hope that you found the conversation fruitful for your journey. Without further ado, I want to let you guys know da -da -da -da, <laughs> that the Journey Daily Planner is in the world. This planner system was created with busy women, busy parents, busy caregivers, busy entrepreneurs in mind to provide clarity in what you do. But more importantly, it was created with the intention of highlighting why you do the things that you do and making sure that you're aligned with your purpose, with every single decision, action, and task that you decide to take on. So this way you can feel that your time is being well spent. This planner system was also created to prioritize your well-being because it doesn't matter how much money you're making in the world, if your mind, your body, your spirit and your social life is in shambles. <laughs> One of the other main goals of this planner and something that sets it aside from all of the other planets on the market is, is that it was created to reduce overwhelm. Overall, the main point of this planner is to make sure that you are including fun in your quest for productivity. Because as I always say in the journey to purpose, joy is our job. And the moment we're able to get clear on what brings us joy and we're able to understand how that joy is connected to our purpose, then we're able to selfishly live in our joy and in service to others, but not from a space of obligation and overwhelm, but one where we're really committed to living out that joy on a daily basis in service to others. I feel like I just said a lot. And I feel like I repeat it a lot, but that's because that's what it is. So with all that being said, if you are interested in getting a Journey Daily Planner for yourself, the link to purchase the planner can be found in the show notes, or if you're watching on YouTube, you can find it in the description box. Now it's time for the special announcement because I did promise you guys one at the top of the episode. And the special announcement is this. I'm hosting a planner party. For everyone who purchases a Journey Daily Planner from now until mid-February, we're talking February 15th, okay, the day after Valentine's Day, you will be getting a personal invitation to party with me as we plan out our vision and our goals for 2020. 
four, we're going to be breaking down the process and the system of rediscovering, reconnecting, and recommitting to your joy and your purpose one feel-good thing at a time. Details for our virtual planner party will be shared with each individual as they send me proof of purchase. So send me a picture of your name, your receipt from Amazon or the Journey to Purpose shop, which can be found at ericalassan.com. The other kicker is that spaces will be limited to the first 30 participants. If this sounds like something that you would like to take advantage of, make sure you head on over to ericalassan.com and purchase your Journey Daily Planner today. Okay. With all that being said, we have reached the end of our episode. And I hope that this conversation has helped you in your journey to creating more time, energy, and space for joy in your life this week and beyond. As always, if you enjoyed the content and you enjoyed watching it or listening to it, please give it a thumbs up, like it, subscribe, rate it, comment, all the things. But more importantly, share it with the journey friends so that we can amplify our vibe tribe. I look forward to joining with you for another faith-fueled Purpose Repel chat in two weeks where we will be diving into conversations around love and marriage because February is coming. Walmart, CVS, all those stores already have all the Valentines out. They've had them out since Christmas. <laughs> So, you know, love season is upon us, but we're not just going to be talking about love and marriage. We are also going to be diving into conversations around self-love, self-compassion, self-worth. So you don't want to miss it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And remember, we're on the journey together. One feel good thing at a time. Talk to you then. Bye. (laughs)